Hello everyone and welcome to my career mode let's play slash tutorial in Kerbal Space Program 1.4.1 and in this episode we're going to start off by trying to nab about 18 more science so that we can unlock the Probodobodyne Octo Probe Core and after that we'll try and rescue Valentina and maybe pick up some other rescue contracts while we're at it. But uh, here we are with a new Gamma Rocket except on the second stage I've removed one of the tanks, one of the one ton tanks and put a Science Junior and two Goo containers instead. Uh, this means that this should have more thrust weight ratio than usual, but we're only going to low carbon orbit. And we're going to do the EVA science uh, from low carbon orbit, and I think that should be enough, but I'm not sure. Anyway, I'll show you what we're going to do. Throttling up, and let's go. So once again, this is the LVT-30. And the reason it's the LVT-30 is because we would not get off the ground very well with the with the swivel engine. But the pod's uh, reaction wheel is sufficient to control this rocket as long as we don't do anything drastic. And nothing drastic basically means staying basically within that circle of the prograde vector. Normally when I say staying within the prograde vector, I mean staying within the circle. And then if you're really on the prograde vector, you're dead center and then you can lean to the bottom of it or to the top of it so here I'm leaning more to the bottom of it to hasten our turn for my realism overhaul launch script uh, when we're going fast enough I just tell it to hold the center of the prograde so we don't flip when there's a lot of aerodynamic drag this is uh, at the speed of sound which is around 300 meters per second through max Q which typically happens around 500 meters per second max Q is maximum dynamic pressure Dynamic pressure is measured by multiplying the air density by the velocity you're going at squared uh, times the surface area hitting the, the atmosphere. And I'm trying to remember if there's anything else. Oh yes, the drag coefficient. Okay. So here we are. We've already got a pretty good time to wap wap, so we can just turn now. We probably could have been a little bit more aggressive with the first stage. But we've got plenty of Delta V for this mission, so it's not a big deal. In fact, we could probably transfer over to Minmus for a Minmus flyby. I really do need to do a video on Minmus stuff, but I'm more interested at the moment to uh, rescue Valentina and the Gamma 2 right now. Uh, so let's just get the science done. We don't have a transmitter on this. We're planning to recover everything with Jeb, obviously. And, of course, we're not actually recovering the Science Junior and the Goo Containers. Jeb is going to have to take the data out of those prior to, uh, prior to re-entry. It is generally better to go polar, and we haven't really talked much about polar orbits in this. But if you really want to hit all the biomes, right now if you go equatorial, I guess this will serve as a brief explanation of inclination. If you're going equatorial, you can only hit the stuff that's right around the equator. But if you go polar, because Kerbin rotates, if you go north and south instead of east and west, then because Kerbin is rotating, you'll eventually hit all of the land, and you'll be able to get whatever science you need from all of the land, or scan it, or do whatever else you need. And that's good. That's why a lot of satellites in real life are put into polar orbits. Uh, the downside is you don't get the benefit of Kerbin's rotation. The gap between surface and orbit only works if you're going eastward or prograde. Okay, we are in orbit. So, uh, let's have Jeb EVA. And so EVA science, EVA report. 4.8 science above Kerbin's water. And this is what I mean. You want to be above each of the biomes. So we're going to keep okay we're going to keep for recovery we already have enough just by that uh, this is only 1.4 science but we'll keep it I plan to launch a similar mission so we collected the data we can't restore the functionality we can only use the science junior once unless we have a scientist which we could have we could launch this with a scientist once we have the probe core and uh, Jeb is a little bit too far away to collect the science from the goo container but here we go take data and we can see the surface biome up there so there there we're at shores let's see if we can catch the shores EV report yes oh no it's water again 
And unfortunately, Jeb alone does not have the Kerbal Engineer display, so we can't really see what biome we're at once we've... Okay, Grasslands. That's new. But we have to board each time because otherwise it'll ask if you want to overwrite the, the report. Let's see if we can catch Shores. Nope, back to water. That's the trouble with Shores. Uh, they're very thin. <laughs> shores are very thin. So it's tough to catch that particular biome sometimes. But yeah, it'll always ask you if you want to overwrite the EVA report if you are trying to take two with uh, Jeb outside uh, at one go. So you have to reboard, store the EVA report, and then go back outside. Alright. I, I mean, it's really tempting to just send this over to Minmus. Why don't I just briefly discuss how I would get to Minmus right now? Let's see the timing. Okay, so... The best place to transfer to Minmus without doing a mid-course adjustment, the easiest way to get to Minmus is uh, if you don't have the tracking station unlocked, so you don't have this ascending or descending node and you can't really see Minmus, what you need to do is take a look at the moon's orbit. And the moon's orbit is at the equator. And what you want is to try and figure out the location where Minmus's orbit crosses the moon's orbit. I think eyeballing it is always tough though. It's better to do with the tracking station unlocked. Somewhere around here. I mean, it's it's tough, but uh, you'll have to feel it out if you don't have it. Uh, if you do have the tracking station unlocked, you'll see the ascending and descending node, and we want to be... Uh, well, you can start it off right on it, but it'll, you'll have to be one side or another of the ascending and descending node, and I'll tell you which way it needs to be. And so we're starting off right on it. And what we want to do is cross Mimus's orbit at the descending node. This uh, will solve the inclination issue, the fact that Mimus's orbit is inclined. But now you'll see that Mimus is uh, behind us when we reach there. So we need to delay. And the way we delay is going beyond Mimus's orbit for a longer period of time. So in order to go beyond Mimus's orbit for a longer period of time, we extend our orbit. But now you see our descending node isn't touching that point so that's not optimal and so if we're delaying for a longer period of time we need to move this node this maneuver node earlier and then we get the encounter and it's optimal when Mimus perturbs your orbit uh, very greatly and so now it's definitely changing our orbit by a lot so we know that we're getting pretty close to Minmus and that's called an off-plane transfer. The alternative is you can transfer at any old time. Uh, let's say instead of going beyond the missus orbit, you wanted to go get there quickly. Well, if you want to get there quickly, you could probably hit it over here, which means you start your maneuver here on the opposite side where you want to hit Minmus. You always start your maneuver on the opposite side from where you want to reach the target. But we can see that we don't have we, we have an inclination problem, Minmus is going under our or orbit. So, we have some uh, possibilities. We can just uh, make a maneuver here at the ascending node and then pull it down because it says ascending and we want to descend from there so that our, our inclination gets to zero. But that costs a bundle, that's 189 more than our normal burn. So that's expensive. We could do something weird on the mid course in the middle of it. And the weird thing we can do is actually move one of our nodes to it. And now, now that we've done that, we need to extend a little bit further. And then we can encounter. And that does not cost as much. You can see that's only 41.2 meters per second. So that's much better. Uh, it will leave you, however, with a continued inclination with Minmus, but that's not a problem. You're still encountering it. So you're still reaching there, and you can uh, finagle it so that you're arbitrarily close. So if you don't like this current orbit, you can get closer and do other things. You can flatten it out, too. It depends, however, how close or how far the ascending or descending node is from Kerbin. Here, our ascending and descending node are really close to Kerbin, but
but if they were out here somewhere, it wouldn't cost that much to change it. The closer you are to Kerbin, the more it's going to cost to change your inclination. Uh, the further out you are, the less it will. Uh, same thing in solar orbit or, you know, in the interplanetary space. The closer you are to the sun, the more it'll cost to co correct your inclination. The further out you are, the better. Uh, so here it's really bad. That's why it costs like 200 meters per second in order to correct the inclination with respect to Minmus, so don't do it. Uh, the two options you have for avoiding that are to make a mid-course adjustment, flattening the orbit out, uh, uh, not flattening the orbit out, but moving the descending node towards Minmus, extending your orbit, and then encountering it. Or the other option, if you're willing to wait a little bit longer to reach Minmus, is to start a maneuver at the ascending node, extend so that you are touching the orbit of Minmus, but what you want to do is go past it. And you see, we really want the descending node to be where this encounters that. So we will move this a little bit earlier. So you see that the descending node is where the closest approach is going to be and then move them together. And if you do that, then once again, when you get to Minmus, you can dictate exactly how you approach it. Uh, if you don't do that, if you instead, if, let's say, we just made the node at the ascending node and burned out and didn't care where the descending node is going to be, it's possible to get an encounter. See, it's encountering over there. But you cannot get it arbitrarily close in that case. So you're going to have to take what you get as far as the approach to Minmus. There's not going to be, it's not going to be as easy to tweak it as it is if you encounter it right at the descending, descending node or ascending node, whichever it happens to be. Either one will work. Okay, so that's just a discussion of how to get to Minmus. And now I have to decide whether I want to do that with Jeb or not, but I think I think it'd be better just to get our science back. Oh, let's get the Highland EVA. And move on to rescuing Valentina first. I, I want to get that done. Alright, there's still mountains and desert. Let me see if I can grab desert quickly. But we've got enough. That'll probably dump us way ahead of the KSC anyway, but uh, again, my main concern is not hitting any mountains. So, that will do. So, in rescuing Valentina, my goal is to explain rendezvous, and uh, let's face it, it's a very interesting rendezvous, uh, trying to catch up to Valentina like this. So, it should be very instructive. We did waste a bunch of fuel, and I could have gone to Minmus, to be honest, but I'm more of in a hurry to rescue Valentina. And really explaining how to get to Valentina will help uh, everyone understand how to get to places like Minmus as well. Okay, splash down and recover. Okay, we have 40 science. And we recovered parts, and, well, Jeb didn't get any new experience, but the important thing is we can unlock Electrics, which has the Probodobodyne Octo that I've been wanting, and also solar panels. Let's not sniff at solar panels, and lights, by the way, but solar panels and the Octo are the important bits. Alright. Alright, everyone, we are here with Gamma 8, which we will use to try and rescue Val in Gamma 2. And this pod does not have any Kerbals in, or monopropellant, by the way. Uh, we are going to be controlled by the Probodobodyne Octo, which I have set to hibernate in warp, because we are going... We, we have actually already time warped a little bit in order to try and match our location with the orbit of Val. And basically, I've eyeballed it. I don't know if Flight Engineer off to the side here has a good way of... Um, let's see... Is there a number that I could have used? Because it's got the angle to relative ascending and descending node, that's important. But that hasn't been changing very much. And I think it's important that we launch before we get that number. Um, 
I don't think it has the information I would need for the, uh, for the rendezvous from the ground, but I'm not sure. So eyeballing it, I think, is the only way to go. Basically, you can see where that orbit crosses the equator of Kerbin, and that is basically when we want to launch. So we're pretty close to where it seems to cross the equator of Kerbin, and we'll see how it goes. So you can see how it's sort of tilting up like that, and right where the space center is is where it crosses the equator, and our space center is equatorial. If you're launching, say, from the other launch site, well, then you're not going to be interested in when that orbit crosses the equator. You're going to be interested in when that orbit crosses your own location, if it does at all. If it doesn't, then you can't reach it directly just on launch. You're going to have to do a multi-step sort of thing to get to the right inclination. And inclination isn't the only thing. There's a phase situation. In other words, this is its inclination, right? That's that. Uh, uh, the inclination is its tilt relative to the plane of the equator. See, the plane of the equator is where the moon is. And that's why the moon is very easy to reach, is because it's at the equator. This orbit that we're trying to get to is not at the equator. But there is a limit. If uh, our own latitude is greater than the angle that it makes with the equator, so let's see, what what, what is our target uh, inclination. Well, it's that angle right there, and I'd estimate that to be like 40 degrees, something something like between 30 and 40 degrees is what we're talking about as far as the inclination there. And if your own latitude is greater than 30 or 40 degrees, then you can't get to that inclination directly. The minimum inclination you can get to from your launch site is that launch site's, incl uh, that launch site's latitude. So the latitude here, I don't know what latitude it is, maybe it's 50 degrees. That means the minimum inclination from that location is 50 degrees. That's the best you can do. And But fortunately, we have the Kerbal Space Center, and it is at the equator, so its minimum uh, inclination is zero, effectively, or close to it. Uh, but inclination is just one thing. The key is also that you have to get the inclination in the right place. That's why we've sort of lined up with it. Because if we were over here, let's say, and then we tried to get into orbit, our inclination would be tilted in a different way. And that wouldn't be any good. It'd be, it could be like backwards. It could be 50 or whatever, 30 to 40 degrees this way instead of that way. And that wouldn't be very helpful. Okay, so here we go. Um, I've estimated that's about an inclination of 40 or so degrees. And... Oh, well, relative inclination, you can see here, it's telling me it's actually 31.78, which means that basically we should be going at um, whatever 90 minus that is from the equator. So I guess about uh, 59, uh, probably a little bit less than that. Uh, I mean, um, more like 50-ish, because we already have some orbital velocity here, and that's already all going 90. So since we've got all the orbital velocity at 90 degrees, we have to compensate for that by going a little bit further north. Okay, well, that's enough discussion. Let's try it out and see how wrong I am. Okay, here we go. So the stalwart gamma rocket continues its service. You can see this, this vector here is the anti-target vector. That's the opposite of where the target is. That's not very helpful right now, frankly speaking. Now you can see as I do this that the relative inclination in the flight engineer is going down. And that's good, that's what we want. If you uh, chose the wrong time to launch, that relative inclination will have a minimum. And, uh, you know, it won't go down to zero. What we want is that to go as close to zero as possible. So the further it goes down, the better. But if it eventually hits a minimum, like you end up at like 5 degrees and you can't get any lower, that's because the timing was wrong. And stay tuned. So there is a bit of eyeballing, and it is not so easy. It is easier with MechJeb. MechJeb will give you a number, 
and tell you exactly when the optimal time to launch is. And so that's a mod that you might want to look into if uh, you just want this just one number that you need. And at some point in this series I'll introduce MechJeb and talk about it more so that you'll know what to look for. But eyeballing it isn't so bad. As you can see we're down to 8 degrees now and that's pretty good. The reason we can't see the target vector, the pointing towards the target vector, is because it's over here. That's where the target is. It's on the other side of the planet and that means down. The maximum that you can fix it at is if the descending node's at 90 degrees away from you. So if you take a look at the whole planet, that's 360 degrees. If it's 90 degrees away from you, you can't fix it anymore. If it's close to you like this, then you can fix it. Now for now we just want to get into a low orbit around Kerbin. Okay, we'll coast a bit. Our apoapsis is here. We can start looking into plotting to intercept. And so we can make orbit here. And you can make more than one maneuver node at a time. So this is one maneuver node. And I guess I should explain the maneuver nodes. So, um, let's start from the beginning. I click on the orbit to make the maneuver node. This handle is prograde, which uh, corresponds to pointing in the direction of your current motion. Oh god, I think I don't have enough communications on this pod. And I've just realized that. Comms. We haven't really had to deal with that too much so far. This is a heck of a way to re-enter. Well... I'm sort of happy something exploded because that's that's no way to re-enter really. It was the probe core by the way, the parachute's still there. Okay, everything exploded. That's impressive. Alright, well, let's build a, an improved version of this. Okay, so here we are again, and once again let's make sure this is hibernati hibernating in warp. We'll have SAS on and targets gamma 2 and we're not that far off really but it's probably better just just to wait and that means waiting the six hours a full a full day for Kerbin to get the right timing make sure that the The electric charge doesn't diminish, and also the rocket doesn't accidentally fall. It might have been, it still probably would have been better with launch clamps, but now I've put solar panels on, so that's good. I think that's good enough. Let's go for it. Okay, so now I've got Commutron 16 uh, tucked in over here, and then two solar panels. I will try to go into a higher orbit to better facilitate communication and also if we don't have a ground station we can connect to it'll give us more time to acquire a new ground station but here we go again launch and once again um, the target vector isn't going to be very helpful it just depends on where it's at in its orbit we still want to go in accordance with what it says the rel relative inclination is over here so 90 minus that is a good approximation but then a little bit of an extra adjustment northward for our existing velocity okay let's make sure we don't flip it out or anything especially as we separate okay oh a little bit unsteady there it looks like three degrees is about all we can do. Once you know you can't fix the inclination anymore, you can just follow the prograde vector, this one. Leaning towards one side or another of the prograde vector will change the inclination, but following it directly will not. Okay, that's a hundred kilometers. We are quite far away from the ascending or descending node. Uh oh, we lost communication that quickly. We didn't even get into space yet. Well, hopefully our 
over this time will be a little bit more helpful. Okay, we've got communication, thank goodness. All right. First of all, let's make for orbit. There we go. All right. Well, that's a close one. All right. I think it's because of our inclination here. But let's talk about how to rendezvous properly. So the periapsis of our target is right here. And the apoapsis, obviously, way out there. There are a few ways of doing this. Um, the, the more straightforward way is to match the periapsis first. But if your inclination is already off, maybe by quite a lot, let's say you even start out not knowing that you would have to rendezvous with a particular target and you were already in orbit, and it turns out that you have to rendezvous with that target and it's in a weird inclination. In that case, it's much better to match the apoapsis first. Let's, let's go with that. Let me plot that out for you. So, in order to match apoapsis, you will burn from your periapsis which is right around here, but it's better to burn directly opposite um, the target apoapsis. So even though our periapsis is over here, we want to burn from here to be opposite that one so that we hit that one. Uh, well, oops, I wasn't looking at it quite right because we have an inclination difference. Mm, around there. Uh, in fact, let's just match the numbers. Seven seven. Uh, sorry, three seven seven eight nine, three seven seven three eight. That's pretty close. Okay, but you can see, even though the difference between us and the target is only three degree inclination, that's enough to create this huge gap over there. That's why intercepting at periapsis is easier. But what we can do is, once we've lifted this up, we can add an over here, correct, and suddenly uh, we have a better intercept. So these are two possible intercept points it's trying to show us there, the orange one and the red-purple one, magenta. And so we can adjust this down to zero. So now there's a zero gap between us. You can see it changes from this tan orange line to the purple one. And we can also um, do a prograde burn to meet up with it. That's not the end of the story though. But that's a good bit of the story. Now what are we doing really with this maneuver? Well, to change the inclination we are pulling on either this purple one or that purple one and we're adjusting it so that it this ascending node reaches zero or in this case point one which is close enough after that we adjust the prograde retrograde which is the two yellowish green ones and just trying to figure out exactly how close we can get so if I pull this one and it goes okay it's obviously gone awry then I know I have to pull this one to get it closer. And we would like to meet up with the target at our apoapsis. That was what we were aiming for. And here it says 152.8. We can use the scroll wheel on this to fine tune it. So I'm just rolling the scroll wheel. 84, 81. And yes, you can right click on that to keep it up. Uh, well, it's only willing to give us 59.5. As a good measure, I would say that you would want something under 10 kilometers. And preferably, if it's uh, in low curb orbit, you can get even lower than 1 kilometer. Um, 50 kilometers is pretty harsh, but it might be a good way to go. Now let's see what the combination of our maneuvers is. We have 884 and 49. So that's, let's say, let's just say we're doing a thousand. That leaves us with 663. It tells us at this intercept that our relative speed, our difference with the target, is going to be 41.2 meters per second. So you can see that relative speed, 41.2 meters per second. That, that tells us ahead of time 
how much more delta v we need in order to match speeds with the target and boost this end up. Remember, this end is still down here. Well, that 41.2 meters per second is what we need to boost this up to that level. And that's an in interesting thing to know, too, because we're going to have to deorbit this with Valentin inside it. And it so happens that that 40 odd meters per second is exactly what we need to bring this back down into Kerbin's atmosphere. It's the same, same thing, just uh, converse. This is partly why I would like to rendezvous with it out there is because uh, it will shorten the amount of time we need to do everything. I might want to show you how to do it in reverse though. So, oh right, control locked because no crew control. Well, we may have to because we don't even have communication. Let's see. So now, opposite that periapsis we create a node. We lift it up. And we're going to match it up. Now here, matching inclinations is going to be annoying. Oops. So you can hold this circle portion, not one of the handles. There are six handles for each of the vectors. You hold this circle portion to move the maneuver around. And we want to make sure we're like this. But we still got that gap, right, because of the inclination. So we're going to have to correct that. And here at the ascending node, I pull the bottom purple one and it looks like we're not quite meeting it, so I'm going to also boost up at the same time. Okay, that's descending node 0. Okay, and that creates a tangent, so you can tell because it's got this uh, maneuver here. Well, that's interesting because we, we're going to get there before that does. And we're going to have to wait a little bit. We can, we can actually just uh, wait on this burn. That's what this minus and plus is. If you right click on a maneuver node, so I bring it up, I right click on it. Minus means go with the orbit before, and plus means go with the orbit after. So plus an orbit, plus an orbit, plus an orbit. And you can see that the target is moving along its orbit each time I do this. And eventually, if I wait long enough, but remember, the target goes much faster on this portion of the orbit than, see, it, it went right past. So let's do this two orbits ahead of time so that we have time to plan and sort of match up with it. So we're going to do 502 here. We're going to do 111 here. What's our relative velocity here? Well, it's not going to show us right now because we don't really have an encounter we're not really very close to it. But let's do this uh, as a sort of an instructive thing to see how different this is compared to the other version, which uh, might, have, might have been better. I think I definitely liked the meeting it up with, uh, meeting up with it in, at Apoapsis. There is a different option. The, another option is actually meeting up with it at the ascending or descending node. Hmm. Well, heck, we're here. Uh, I'm trying to explain rendezvous. So let's talk about meeting up with it at the ascending or descending node. That's actually pretty handy because you just select one of the nodes, ascending or descending node. You burn out. And you only have to do one burn. So now we've done a burn to go out and correct the inclination. And we want to correct it at zero. But this is not a good situation to do this in. And the reason is, you, you can see, we're not touching the target orbit at one point. We're touching it in two points. So, and it's a little bit awkward because uh, we don't really know where exactly we're going to be burning to match orbits with it. It's just, I mean, it just looks awkward, doesn't it? 
And it's a lot nicer to meet up with it at periapsis or apoapsis in this case. If you're rendezvousing with a planet or a moon, then encountering at the ascending or descending node makes more sense because you've got some help from the moon's gravity. In this case, we don't have any help from gamma 2 once we get there in order to make orbit around it. If we're not trying to make orbit around it, so the situation is quite different. And so we're not going to meet up with it at the ascending or descending node. It's just not practical because we didn't really see the result of it. We saw the result of the other one and we were able to calculate that we would have enough delta V to do the whole thing, including bringing Valentina back. Let's see if we would still have enough delta V going this way and the relative benefits and drawbacks of going this way. Oh, there is another possibility here. Uh, you could push, push your uh, ascending or descending node at that point there. That's not a horrible idea, but it's in this case unnecessary really. I don't think it's a huge benefit to do that, allowing the target to catch up but not pass us. So one, two, two orbits, a, uh, yeah, two orbits ahead of it passing us. Okay, so let's do this. And considering our communication situation, it might be advisable to do three orbits ahead, just in case you end up having a communication blackout situation. So because we're in this little tight orbit, we get to be a little bit more careful about how we approach the target, as opposed to the whole meeting up with meeting up with it at apoapsis. Well, our orbital period will be much closer to its orbital period. And so we'll only get, like, we'll re we really have to aim for it correctly. Otherwise, we're going to miss it and we'll have to wait a long time to uh, fix the situation. Now, this way, our relative velocity to the target is going to be much higher than it is for the other version. So when we meet up with the target, we're going to have a much bigger burn. Now, mind you, there are two places we can do this inclination correction, both here and here. So if we did miss this one at the appointed time because we didn't have communication, we would still have a chance over here as well and then another chance over here because uh, the target would have gotten to about this location. The higher you are, of course, the more ground stations you can communicate with, so that's really helpful. You can see we really have a blackout when we get very close to Kerbin, but the higher up we are, the better off we are. I think it'd be better to time warp in the tracking station. Let's pop on over there. Okay, so in the tracking station we can see that we have a maneuver plotted and in fact with Kerb Alarm Clock if you want to you can add this maneuver node alarm. It'll automatically, if you say add, give you the next logical thing for the craft that you've selected and that's this maneuver in 2 days and 20 hours and that's nice because Kerb Alarm Clock will take you out of time warp uh, when that alarm is about to take place, hopefully, assuming that it doesn't mess with us. So the first step is to create the tangency. Step two, correct the inclination, if that's necessary depending on the technique we're using, whether we're hitting it at an ascending or descending node or not. So we'll just wait until that's minimal. We don't really need to follow that delta V necessarily. Up, and it started going up again, so we'll take that for now. And now we can plot for the next bit. And to really match up orbits with it, we're going to, at, at this location, burn up. And you can see we get a little encounter here. And like I said, over there it was, we were facing a 60 kilometer gap. Here, because of the timing, it's easier to get a much closer encounter. See, 1.5 and 0.5. Okay, so, but we need to review here. We've got this boost up burn of 163, and then we've got a monumental burn to match with it. You can see relative speed is 702. So we're going to need 702 kilometers, uh, sorry, not kilometers, meters per second 
to boost up to that apoapsis. But that's something that we previously, on our previous plot, we did initially, right? The first burn was 883 meters per second. But that still costs less than this version because uh, our first burn here was 500 to get this part and we still need to do 700 to get that part. Whereas uh, the first version where we rendezvoused at apoapsis, we, we had 800, we did a correction of about 100 for the inclination and then we only had to burn 40 or so. So that, that overall was much better, but we still have enough to do it this way. This way is going to be the way you're going to, for instance, capture asteroids. In this game, there are asteroids out there. We can't see them right now because we need to unlock that in the tracking station. But some contracts are going to give you uh, capture an asteroid contract, pull it into orbit around Kerbin, and you won't be able to rendezvous with the asteroid at the apoapsis. You'll only have a periapsis around Kerbin, and so you're going to have to do it like this. And you have to remember to time your tiny little orbit here so that it gives you enough time to intercept it without it flying past. So it's sort of the same sort of situation. And the same launch situation where you're eyeballing it or trying to make sure that you're in line and have the right inclination in a small orbit around Kerbin so that you can time the intercept properly like this. So, and again, with that uh, asteroid, you will be able to uh, boost up at your periapsis to match whatever its velocity happens to be, grab it, and then uh, pull it into orbit. But that's all later. So this is an important way to rendezvous with things. The important thing is to do half of the delta V before the node and half after. Okay, get rid of that, and you can see the actual gap there, and we can just burn as necessary. There we go, 0.6, close enough. Now we see that we've got 40 seconds left in the stage, so we should do that about 20 seconds before we meet up with the target. And it does show you the time to when you're going to meet up with the target there. So we've got an hour. And once we're on target here, by clicking here we can change the target. We want to be pointed at the yellow mark with the X, which is indicating the opposite of our relative velocity. How well we do this is like everything at this point. 702 meters per second is a huge amount to have to deal with. You can see it's coming at us pretty fast and we want to be close otherwise we're going to use extra fuel to rendezvous with it and we don't have that much just to spare so. Ah, I probably shouldn't have thrall down so much. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so we're closing in on the target now. We don't want to go too fast. Again, because that'll take delta V and we only have 161 meters per second left. So eventually we're going to park. Then Val is going to have to EVA to this vessel. And then at apoapsis we're going to drop the orbit into the orbit uh, into the atmosphere of Kerbin. And that's as much of a rendezvous as I'm gonna do here. We'll take care of docking some other time. Now okay that should be fine. EVA and that's our target but we can't really set that as a target with Val here. Okay, grab and board. Okay, so now let's use our 159 meters per second. We are going away from the target, I think. Well, let's just make sure of that. Okay, now we're going away from it. Alright, so at apoapsis we're going to bring our periapsis down 26 kilometers should be fine. And again, if we happen to go out again, it's fine because the periapsis is still at 26. So we'll just go through one more time. Okay, off it goes. Service module explosions are audible. And we are definitely coming down. Okay, parachute deployment. 
We are over grasslands. I think we've done the EVA signs here. I think Val should be carrying some sign. Oh, no, that was in the... Ah, oh, I missed that. Well, in the haste to rescue Val, we forgot to grab the signs from the other pod. You have to right-click on it uh, while Val is EVAing. Take the data from the other pod and bring it into a new rescuing pod. Otherwise, you lose the signs. Well, let's see. Not, not a perfect mission, but... I'm happy to report that Val is back. Let us recover. So probably on our future rendezvous, I'll continue to explain how I'm doing it because uh, I don't think this is the... <laughs> uh, I, I crammed a lot of explanation into it that wasn't very smooth and it could bear with some more explanation in practical terms as we see examples of how to do it. But um, I hope this is a good beginning as far as uh, telling you how to do rendezvous in Kerbal Space Program and basically in space as well. So on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like and I'll see you next time.